I've been a longer fan for years. They've made great budget lasers and I've reviewed pretty much their entire line on this channel. Uh, however, they recently approached me and, and asked if I would review this Nano Pro. It's a it, relatively new laser. It's been out since uh, I think February of 2024. And it's very different than what Longer has done in the past. So I have to confess, I wasn't all that excited to do a review on it, but I thought I'd give it a shot and decide whether this laser is something that I would say I love or something I'd say I don't love. So if you're interested in the answer to that question and many more, then stick around. Hey, it's Steve, welcome back. Now I'm gonna jump right in here because there's a lot to cover with this Nano Pro and I'm gonna start by looking at some of the specifications. I'll pop up uh, a table here. Uh, I'm not gonna go through this entire list, but I'll start by talking about the, the workspace and the first kind of disclaimer is that this laser may not be for everyone because the workspace is, is pretty small. It's 100 by 100, but if you add the sliding table, then you can get it up to 100 by 300. So you can do relatively large things if you want, but really this laser is not designed uh, for, say, the kinds of applications that you'd have with an open frame laser like the Ray 5 or, or the, the longer B1. But if you have requirements to grab the laser head and maybe put it vertical on a wall or on a crate if you're in the shipping business and just engrave something, you can do that with this laser. And that's something you can't do, of course, with an open frame laser. Now, as a result of that, there's a few drawbacks, and I'll talk about those in this video as well. Uh, but what you get is some serious flexibility here and definitely portability. And that's probably enough to get started. Now what I want to do is I'll start looking at just a quick flyover of some of the really basic features that come in the box with this laser. And then I'll do a few tests with the laser itself. Then I'll bring in the rotary and do a couple of rotary tests and finally the sliding table test. And uh, you'll see that this laser is actually pretty flexible. So let's get going and uh, we'll start with, with some of the flyover. And when we come around to the front of the laser, it's a very compact design. I mentioned it's small, but it's well-defined and works great. There's a really impressive manual, although there's a few gaps and I'll call those out as we go. And looking around the back, uh, lots of clear uh, connectors uh, for the fan and some accessories and, and power and whatnot. And around the front, there's a, a shroud you can remove. It, this isn't a class one laser, but you can remove the shroud and you can just work without it. And you know, honestly, you may want to do that. Uh, the workspace is removable. Again, it's pretty small, 100 by 100. This is great if you're doing a lot of coasters or something. You also get these, these little L brackets that you can screw into the base. And what those allow you to do is, is give you some quick accurate reproducibility if you're maybe doing mass production of something. Now when you use any diode laser the first thing you have to worry about is focus. Now the Nano Pro doesn't focus like a typical diode laser so there's no wedge you can shove underneath the laser uh, and drop it down. There's no stick that drops down. You have to do this using this button on the top of the laser and what it does is turns on the red dots and if there's two red dots, the laser's not in focus, so you can use these up and down buttons on the back of the laser to raise and lower the head, and when you get a single dot there, then the laser's in focus. It's really that simple. And I, I called it an autofocus. It's not really automatic, but it is a very, very simple manual operation. The Nano Pro package also comes with a couple of key accessories. The first is this rotary tool. And it's actually a really nice rotary tool. There's adjustments everywhere. You can raise and lower the support out at the end. You can certainly adjust the chucks and it has very long uh, fingers on the chucks so they hold really well. You can also tilt the head up and down. You also get this uh, sliding table uh, which brings the workspace up to 100 by 300. There's a bunch of extra rulers that you can use and some really awesome little clamps to hold things down. So. Uh, we'll talk about all of these things in more detail as we go. Now, if you don't have the pro version of this laser, you can buy all of these accessories separately uh, and uh, you can just check out the longer site for that. I wanted to run my usual set of tests for, uh, for diode lasers and I, I, I started it up here and you can see as I'm cutting, it, it worked as expected. Now keep in mind, cutting with a Galvo laser is a bit problematic and I'll explain that in a bit, but the material test was 
pretty much as you would expect it. It came out quite nice. Then I did a gradient test to determine what settings to use for my dog photo and I engraved that and it, it came out really nice actually. So when we look at the results, you can see this laser does actually cut, although I would not call this a cutting laser. And again, I'll explain that. The material test uh, looks pretty good, although there's no real power below, uh, below 20%. The gradient test uh, told me that I should pick about 10, 12,000 millimeters a minute for uh, for the settings for the dog, and that's what I used. And it came out, you know, as as you would expect it to come out. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the test results. And now I wanted to do a couple of real world projects just to make sure that the laser can handle some other materials. And the first project I wanted to do was something on cardstock. Now cardstock is just paper, so the settings are super critical. And I just took the longer logo and put it inside a rectangle here. And you can see the settings there. Uh, and then I just shot it over to the laser. I focused, so the first thing it's going to do is cut out the rectangle. And then it did the engrave. I didn't show you much of the engrave there. But you can see it came out all right. Now this was uh, was a Stucky uh, or Jarvis rather uh, rendering, so not too bad overall. And uh, it certainly can work on paper. And that's pretty typical of the kind of material that would be used for this sort of laser. Another material that would be used quite often would be uh, a metal uh, anodized aluminum or stainless steel. So I took my lighthouse image and uh, I'm gonna do an actual grayscale here and did the setup and set up a, a dog tag in the laser and just let it go. And it, it uh, started the process. I'm not gonna show you a whole bunch because really all it is is a bunch of blue light, but when the final result came out here, you can see it looks uh, spectacular actually. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with, with how it handles these, I'll, I'll say non-traditional materials, but pretty typical materials for a laser that's this size. So at this point, the laser doesn't do anything more than a standard longer nano does, but we need to investigate now what makes it a pro. And the first thing we're going to look at is the rotary attachment. And when we set this up, we need to take the laser off the, off the lift and put this square uh, mounting bracket on it, basically is a, is a lifter. And then there's a hole in the laser there you can see that just mounts on top of it. So that gives it enough height so that we, when we drop the rotary in here uh, and put something at the center line of the rotary that it's, it can be focused. And of course we drop the rotary, we put the, the yellow connector in the back and I'm just going to level the head up here. I don't know if that's necessary, but I, I don't want the, the engraving running downhill. And they include this kind of kludgy sponge uh, uh, box for the end. I really don't like that, but it has to be there. Then I loaded up Lightburn. Now there's a couple of things you need to do. The first one is if you right click on the uh, rotary selection button, you can bring up uh, the macro effectively underneath it. And what you can do there is set the diameter of your material that you're going to work with. And you also need to go and change the, the bed size, change the y-axis of the bed size to 480. And that allows you to do uh, engraving on a rotary. I'm just going to drop my logo in here. And uh, the width here is the, the amount of space, the 100 millimeters that you can engrave. So I've selected it. I'm going to use threshold to uh, just because it's monochrome. I'm going to use a cardboard uh, uh, cylinder here because they're free and uh, I'll just engrave my logo. As, as you can see, it comes out actually remarkably well. This is sped up about 10 times, I think. And when, it, when all is said and done, if you look at the result, uh, it looks amazing. <laughs> and uh, it's nice and round if you measure. Uh, if you get the diameter right, you measure the, the horizontal and the vertical around the tube, it'll, they'll be perfect. And uh, that's the rotary. It's about as simple as you can get. Now, they don't use the, the standard light burn kind of rotary selection, which is a bit odd. But it's because of the Galvo mechanism that they have, uh, because that really doesn't translate to X, Y in, in light burn uh, from a stepper motor perspective, because there are no stepper motors. Now there's one last feature they have here that makes this Nano a pro and that's the addition of the slider extension. And it's really just a simple uh, metal plate effectively that, that slides back and forth with the stepper motor. 
And to put it in here, you use the L brackets uh, to position it, and what that allows it to do is bump up against that. It's pretty freeform sitting, but it, it slides up against that in the horizontal direction and gives you uh, perfect horizontal positioning. Then you plug in the extension cable, and uh, they provide this nice 3D printed cable harness, uh, which prevents all the cables at the back from getting in the way. So I'm just going to drop a piece of material on here and give this a shot. And this material is about 170, 180 millimeters long. So I'll go into light burn. And the first thing I need to do is change again some settings. I need to go and change the workspace X positioning. And then I can just go select the extension, the slide extension option, and I'll drop my logo on here. I'm just going to use my company logo. And then I'll start the engrave. And I'm just showing you in real time here the last bit of it. And when you look at the result, uh, of course, like anything else, uh, it comes out pretty great. So uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this extension. Now you're going to want to use this at those times when you most of the time you use a hundred millimeter by a hundred millimeter workspace but there's occasions when you want something a little longer this will triple the y-axis to 300 millimeters so it's a nice option uh, if most of the time you're working with a small workspace all right i want to sum up here on this longer nano pro and i mentioned at the beginning i wasn't that excited about this laser because it honestly and selfishly doesn't fit into the typical workflow that i use so uh that shouldn't discourage you because there are definitely a lot of people who are going to find this laser is fantastic in part because everything you're going to need is in the box in addition to the laser you get a really nice rotary one of the better ones i've seen and you get uh, the slide extension to, to make the workspace three times bigger it's also portable uh, you can take this laser right off the stand if you want and you can drop it onto a cutting board and engrave your logo or put it on a wall and do the same thing and it has enough power. It, it's a 12 watt laser rather than a standard 10 watt laser. And those extra two watts seem to make a huge difference. And the output quality here is second to none. And you can go back and look at the many examples I did in the video here and they all look amazing. Uh, now there were a few things I wasn't that excited about. First of all, I'll start with that red protective cone, the, the shield. Uh, I took that thing on and off about three times before I finally got fed up and put it aside uh, and just used my glasses. I have a really good set of safety glasses and it was just easier. Uh, it also touches the material because the height of that red cone is the exact height of the focus, which is fine if you're on the workspace, but if you're using the extension, uh, it's going to touch the material and I had it hit a clamp when I when I was doing this it just it's just not good and it does have a fan however that you might want to use if you're doing engraving and you want to keep that smoke sucked away from the engraving surface then you're going to want to use it but uh, th that'll lead into the next conversation I have here, which is this laser is really only for engraving, even though it can cut. And I showed you the cutting example. Keep in mind that this laser is, is using galvos rather than moving a, a laser around. So when it's out to the extremes, say you're cutting something out at, you know, 100, 100 comma 100 in the coordinates, that laser is going to be at quite an angle. So if it's cutting, it's going to cut at an angle and that's probably not going to be good if you want any kind of precision and uh, it there's also no air assist here and really no exhaust fan to speak of there is the one in the back of the cone but you can't put a, a pipe on that and pipe it outside at least not easily so if you need exhaust then you have to think about how to deal with that with this laser and finally i think the workspace here is still a bit small again selfish view uh, if you're working with, say, coasters or keychains, you're probably not going to care. 100 by 100 is probably fantastic, and certainly if you're taking it to a craft fair. But uh, you may find you outgrow this laser because of the size. Now, you do have the extension, so you can make it bigger. But overall, that was a, a bit of a concern for me, and again, from my selfish perspective. So I'll put an affiliate link in the description down below. It won't cost you any more if you're interested in buying one of these, uh, but it will help out the channel. And I really appreciate that. So 
uh, use that. And as I mentioned, I, I, I really do like this laser. It's just not in my typical workflow. So, uh, you know, I really couldn't use it if I wanted to. But uh, a lot of people are going to love this laser, especially for the, the portability aspect of it. And if you're interested in more longer lasers, I'll put a link to a video up here. This is probably the one you should watch if you want something maybe a bit bigger. And I'll wind down and I'll say, uh, get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.